Now we're ready to start our watercolor uh, part of our composition. I asked you to have your color wheel handy um, and I will, if you don't have it, we'll put a picture, a still photo of that in the chat. And then I also suggested that you might want to pull out from last semester your warm and cool color value scales. Okay. The other things that we're going to need today are our value drawing, our watercolor box, our watercolor brush, and a water container. And I have my water container sitting on a styrofoam plate so my brush doesn't leave paint and such on the table. But if I wanted a larger space to mix colors, I could use the plate for that as well. In your packet you have watercolor paper. And take a sheet of watercolor paper. It's heavier, it has texture, and if you look at the surface, it has little, little kind of texture marks or tooth, we call that tooth, okay? We're going to take our watercolor paper and fold it in half. And today we are going to work on our warm color painting. So remember, these are our warm colors, the reds, the yellows, and the oranges. So I'm going to take my value chart and fold it so only the warm side is showing. So that helps remind me of what colors that I am going to use. I have made two light pencil sketches, no pencil shading on my watercolor paper, and I have sketched the shape lightly with pencil of the highlight areas. We talked about that last time. So, um, and I also have my crayons and I pulled out the white. So on one, on the drawing, the watercolor painting we are going to do today, I'm going to use the white wax to make my highlights. And this will give me a result similar to my wax resist painting that we did when we were practicing some of our watercolor techniques. When we do our second watercolor painting, we are going to also be thinking about value, but not use the white wax, so then we can see the comparison. Since we're using white or warm colors, I have already put a drop or two of water in my painting paints before we start. Since we're using warm colors, I really only need to put water in my red, my yellow, and my orange. And I'm going to put out some yellow by itself, some orange by itself, and if I want to get the color out of the brush, I can kind of pinch the brush to squeeze out the color. It's also handy to have a paper towel for your fingers or to take extra water off your brush. Now, even though I start with my colors in separate wells of my mixing tray, I'm going to mix the colors. But my lightest value in my drawing is my yellow. So I'm going to take some of the yellow and add some extra water. Remember, we're working for transparency, so that's the see-through quality. And I'm going to lightly go over with the wash with my yellow paint that I've mixed up. Now, watercolor has to be shiny. It's called watercolor, so it's really important that you use enough water into your paint. You'll notice I'm not mixing water onto my paper. I'm taking the color from what I've mixed up on my tray. And it should show up. You'll notice when I paint over where I have wax, the color resists or moves away from that area. 
Now some people, when they have finished their wash, like to let the water sit on their painting. I want to just look around and be sure that I haven't missed any areas. And it's very important that watercolors stay fresh, so I don't want to brush over it a bunch of times. However, if I have water that is too much in one place, I can rinse my brush and pinch it out, and then I can come back with my brush and just touch, barely touch the paper and it will soak up some of that extra water. Watercolor paint likes to be wet and it likes to flow on the paper. So as long as you keep that in mind, that's great and you won't have any trouble. Now you'll notice my next value is going to be orange, but I, I forgot something I wanted to show you. So I'm going to put some more yellow over here. And that is our first value was blank. That's our highlight. So I'm just going to paint my value bar there with the yellow. And I'm going to pick up some of the color so I don't have quite so much water there. And then I'm going to have orange be my next value. And then I'm going to have red orange be my last value. Okay, so we're going to kind of work in this way. So just like with our pencil drawing, we're going to make a little value scale. If we look at this other example that's already dry, you'll notice the value scale is on the side of the paper. Okay. If you choose to make your value scale on the side of the paper rather than drawing out with pencil, that's fine, but m bump it up a little higher and make it a little smaller because that way if we have a nice painting, we won't um, need all those marks there. Okay, so now that you can see, this is going to be my next color and it is not straight orange and it is not straight yellow, it's yellow orange. And so I'm going to look at my value drawing And I'm going to put, I want to have my value drawing in a place where I'm not going to drip watercolor on it. Some of the areas will be wet into wet, and some of the areas are going to be wet, in, wet onto more dry paper, and that's fine. So we're trying to have watercolor behave as watercolor does. I want to let some of my yellow show so I'm not trying to paint over everything I've done. So yellow is one of our values so you'll notice I'm not painting over that. And if I like, don't like the hard edge here, I can clean my brush and just put some clean water there. Not a lot, but so that will flow into that area. Okay. And let's take, this is a little awkward here, so let's go up and move some of that paint around a little there. Okay. All right, so now my next color is going to be a darker red orange but I've kind of used up my yellow so now I'm not going to come from my orange I've got plenty here so I'm going to make mix it up a little more pigment a little less water and that's kind of close to what I have before so now I'm going to make it a little more red orange okay now if the paper is very shiny it's going to be wet into wet so if I want a wet into wet I can paint on that and that's what it'll do. If I want my colors to be more precise, then I'm going to have to let my paper dry. So when the paper is not shiny, it will be finished or ready to be wet on dry. 
We're not quite done yet. And I noticed in my drawing that the middle was sort of light and it was darker on the edges. And I'm going to get just a little bit here and a little bit here. So we want to sort of control what the watercolor does. Okay, and you can see the paper is still very shiny. Now, the top of the pepper shaker had too much water, so I lifted some of that water out with a brush. So I want a pretty dry brush, and it's a small area. So I'm going to bring some of that color back on top. So I'm trying to create contrast. Now, there's a reason why I'm not using complementary colors to create value. What do yellow and blue make? They make green. I don't want this to be green. So we're trying to create the entire painting with those colors. And now you can see how I've kind of bumped into my value scale there. It would be good if I painted painted that well ahead of time and let it be a little bit dry. And so I might find that I have to wait a while before I come back and paint a little bit more. Okay, if the red's too strong, then I'll use the red-orange. But if the colors are going to bleed together because my paper is still pretty wet. When I'm all finished, this was our pepper area in here. When I'm all finished, I might have to come back and my paper is dry. I might have to come back with a yellow or a yellow orange and tone down some of my highlights. But for right now, I think that's about as far as I can go because the paper is too wet. Okay, so that's what I would like to have you do. Just know that the painting is not totally finished. So at this point, we need to let the paper 100% dry and then we'll come back and do part two after of the warm painting after that's dried for a little bit. Sometimes artists use a hair dryer, but if you use a hair dryer on wet watercolor, it makes the paint spread, so we're not going to do that. We're going to let it dry naturally. Okay? So we want our, let's review. We want our value drawing. We want our watercolor paper folded in half. We want our pencil so that we can make a light sketch and we're sketching, we're sketching the shapes of the highlights, just the outline. You'll notice there's no pencil shading on the drawing, just the highlights. It will be helpful if you have your value scale from our abs creating an abstract from a sketchbook drawing and it will be helpful if we use also our color wheel so we are using the yellow yellow orange orange red orange and red part of the color wheel this part only today okay and we're trying to get transparency remember watercolor uses a lot of water and it is transparent that means see-through and we did wet into wet techniques on part one. And when we come back, we'll do wet on dry.